right now there are ways that medical students and trainees can become involved in this research even without accessing patient data. You look at that article that was published on disinformation in the BMJ. That was something any of you could have done. These are publicly available algorithms. How to jailbreak them is publicly available, for better or for worse, probably for worse. What about other ways that these algorithms might be used wrong? Currently, they're publicly available. Patients can use them. What about if a patient says, hey, what's the role of arthroscopy for knee osteoarthritis? Now, it's a bit of a trick question, possibly. Uh, you don't, don't necessarily need an arthroscopy for knee osteoarthritis. It's quite often an unnecessary procedure. There's guidelines around that. So there's the Choosing Wisely guidelines, and they very explicitly say when you should not do this. If you put that into ChatGPT right now, it's going to tell you all the reasons to do it. Because it depends on how you write into it. And I don't think we know how patients are writing into it. I don't think we know the information they're getting out of it. And I think that the Choosing Wisely guidelines are a great place to start. I think this could be evaluated in every specialty there. Because when evidence is contentious and when questions are framed in a well-meaning but perhaps not careful manner, they can provide results that are misleading.